as with everything else in the 3D printing world, you find yourself wanting to upgrade things, needing to upgrade things, or just think you need to upgrade things. So um, uh, one of the things that I've upgraded with the uh, Ender 3 V2 is the firmware. Uh, initially with the Creality firmware, which worked fine, I decided to upgrade to uh, Gyre's firmware. And uh, Gyre's gave me some features that I was interested in. I wanted color screens. Uh, there were a couple other things. And the Gyre's firmware worked very well for me. Then I was reading up on the professional software. And one of the features I wanted to look at in the professional was when you did a print, it would display the print, uh, the actual picture, on the LED screen. Uh, turns out that is only displayed if the print comes from the SD card, but still it's kind of neat to see. Uh, I use Octoprint, and uh, so when you send a file from Octoprint, you don't get that display. But at any rate, one of the things I was having an issue with, <clears throat> didn't really realize I had the issue, um, when you start a print, the first thing the printer does is it homes itself. Then after it does that, it starts doing the print. I didn't seem to be able to adjust the z-axis after that print started. Uh, once in a while it would work, other times it would not. And in the current release of the uh, professional software, there's a line item that says, now you can adjust the z-axis after doing a home with the manual mesh, and, and manual mesh is, is what I use. So. Uh, I've decided I wanted to do an upgrade on the uh, professional software, professional firmware, and uh, that's the reason I'm doing this upgrade, so I thought I'd film it and make a video of it. The um, professional software, uh, I run the manual mesh. I don't have the BL Touch or the CR Touch or whatever they are. Uh, when you do an upgrade of your firmware, it's going to erase all of your settings for the manual mesh. There is a way to save that with G-Code, and then with G-Code you can reinstall that. Uh, maybe I'll do another, a different video for showing how to do that example. Um, before you do a upgrade for the firmware, any firmware, you need to know your motherboard uh, uh, number, and apparently within the last year or so it came up there's a chip on the motherboard that you need to be able to identify that chip based on uh, settings in the firmware. Uh, the motherboard I have is 4.2.2, and the chip is um, RET6, which I think is the more current chip of the, the two chips that are there. But the professional software, from what I've read, uh, is supposed to be able to handle both chips, where the gyres, I'm not really sure if it, if it handled both or not, and same thing with the base Creality. Uh, I believe there's some uh, different versions of each. I'm not looking into those right now. I'm just doing an upgrade on the professional. So um, that being said, I'm putting together this video to go over uh, how to download, how to format your card, and how to actually do the upgrade. The SD card that I use for putting on the firmware it's this is just the case and in the case you actually have the SD card and in this case I'm using a 8 gigabyte uh, card that will be formatted with fat so you put it back into the adapter then the whole unit gets placed into, in this case, the laptop. Okay, so now when we in insert the SD card into the laptop, we'll get a window, and that window will open right to the SD card and hopefully you can see that I already have a firmware file on here and I've got two older ones that I've renamed to save. 
Now, if you wanted to format this uh, SD card, you would right click on it. And that's not working. There we go. Then you would click Format. And you would want to make sure that the FAT32 is selected. In this case, it's an 8 gig drive, so there's system space. And your 4096 for the size. Put a volume label in, do a quick format, and you would format the, uh, the SD card. So what we're going to do is we're looking at the firmware, uh, various options for the Ender 3 V2. Uh, I've used three different firmwares on this Ender that I have. Uh, the firmware that came with it, the Creality firmware. I then was using the Gyres firmware for a number of months. And it, Gyres worked really good. And then I liked some of the features I was reading about in the professional Microsec firmware. So that's what I switched to. The uh, gyres is located at https colon slash slash github.com slash gyres, J-Y-E-R-S. And under the gyres, you have uh, three different repositories. The Marlin, which is what you want to go after. Configurations, which is uh, other configurations if you want to compile, compile your own source. And I don't know what this one is. Uh, the Marlin, when you click on it, you'll see that uh, the last update, the major fix, was November 5th, 2021. And click on that, and you go to the different bin files that you can download. If I were going to use this, I would go with the Ender 3 V2 manual mesh. Uh, 5x5 manual mesh is what I'd be interested in. My motherboard is a 4.2.2, and then it's the version of the file and the bin. But that's not <clears throat> the file I'm interested in right now. I'm interested in the professional, which is at https colon slash slash github slash <clears throat> microsec m-r-i-s-c-o-c slash ender3 v2s1 and in here you'll see that 29 days ago uh, they published a, uh, the latest firmware which was a mid-year maintenance release so the reason I'm going after this one is I tend to have an issue you know, everything with 3D printing, you think you have a problem. And looks like a fix in this version of the firmware allows the Z height to be adjusted after Z home for the manual mesh. Seems like after I start printing and I try and adjust Z, sometimes it takes, sometimes it doesn't. So that is the reason I'm going to go with <clears throat> this version of the, uh, the professional. And through here, there's lots of descriptions, pictures, um, so a lot of the features that the professional offers that others don't. And down at the bottom, you'll find the bin files. And what I'm after is the um, Ender 3 V2, motherboard 422, manual mesh, and then uh, 22816 is the bin file. So clicking on that bin file gives you a uh, location to store it. I've already downloaded it. It's out right here. So I'm going to cancel out of this. Now that I've downloaded the bin file from the um, professional website, we need to get that onto the SD card. I already have my SD card inserted into the machine. But what we need to do is go get the file. So I'll dig down to where I saved it to. And that file is right here. So I will do, because that's 22816. So I'll do a copy. And then we'll go down to the SD card. 
and we'll do a paste. So there's now I have two bin files. Uh, this other bin file is a set of the professional that I compiled myself and that's what I'm currently running and this will be the current one. So I need to take the old file and do a rename on it so it's .save so that it, when the uh, ender boots up it's only going to look for the bin file he's not going to find it in those three. Now this other the dwin set that are, that's the icons for the display. So that's okay to be just sitting there because the only thing that's going to look at it is the display. If I were to put the SD card into the display, it would reload these icons. So I should be all set to go. And I will remove the SD card from the laptop and then we'll put it into the ender and see where it goes. Now we're going to take the SD card from the laptop and put it into the ender while the ender is off. So we need to move the bed. Let's unplug the Raspberry. Let's pop out the card that's got a couple files on it. We'll take it out of its little case. Put it in, preferably the correct way. So now the SD card is inserted. And by powering it on, it should load that new bin file. And we'll watch the display. Hopefully it will turn from blank to something useful. There we go. And we're loaded up. Settings stored. If we go to control, info, and we can see the version 2.1.1 microsec is not the version that I had. The uh, build date is August 16th, uh, 2022.